Hero Charisma back when it launched in 2003 immediately became the benchmark of performance. Its sales skyrocketed and it soon garnered cult status. But over the years that has dulled out a bit and more higher performing vehicles have come and taken its crown away from it. But to rectify that, we finally have the all new Charisma after all these years. 2003 was when the original Charisma launched. 2023 is when this new Charisma has launched. 20 years apart. But to make this first ride review a little more interesting, we have gotten the old Charisma to get a proper taste of what that bike offered and why it was so special and whether or not this lives up to that Charisma tag. Welcome to our first ride review of the all new Charisma XMR210. If you like this video, share it with like-minded enthusiasts, click on that like button and also click on that bell icon to stay notified for all things thrill of riding. Now the Hero Charisma XMR210, it has big boots to fill. The original Charisma back when it launched in 2003 quickly rose to fame and became the benchmark of performance in the segment. Now it was even the muse for Adil Jal, Daru Khanawala and Sirish Chandran who decided to use it to set the national record for the longest distance covered in 24 hours by a motorcycle. A record that was only broken nearly 20 years later just this year. Back then, the team needed a motorcycle that was capable of sitting at 100 km per hour all day long, throw no reliability issues and also be comfortable for the rider. And that's exactly what the Charisma was. It was peppy, it was fast, it had power and most importantly, it was reliable. There really wasn't any other option back then. So the Charisma was by default the only choice that they had. Now over the course of its life, it has gone through its fair share of upgrades and payslips. There were upgrades that gave it a little more features here and there. Then there was the Charisma R which gave it a little more power. But for me, in my books, the original Charisma is still the king of it all, simply for what it did for the Indian enthusiast. Now like I said, this XMR, it has big boots to fill. Is it going to be the benchmark of the performance like the Charisma was back when it launched? I'm not too sure, but that's because now there are so many more competent offerings in the market with just as much performance, if not more. That being said, this does make more power than an RC200. But the question that we are actually here to answer is does this deliver on the same kind of thrills that the Charisma did? Because that when it came, it really took the market by storm. And that's exactly what we're going to be finding out today. And we're going to be kicking things off with the design because that was a very important part of the Charisma's success. Now I think it's time to take a look at the design of the new Charisma but before we do that we need to take a look at the old Charisma to really get an idea of where it comes from. And to that end nearly 20 years on and the Charisma is still unmistakably a Charisma. You have that large angry looking headlight, the short semi fairing that goes around with this start windscreen and the long flowing seat, the muscular tank, the upright but commanding riding stance and that big barrel exhaust. All those elements, they really lend the Charisma an identity of its own. Even those big meters and these decals, all of it scream Charisma. Now what you see here is a 2014 Charisma R, but the design has remained largely unchanged since launch. Now I'm not talking about the XMRs, I'm talking about just the Charisma. So just the Charisma, the design has remained largely unchanged. But it's a design that has worked so well for them, that despite not changing it, it really sold well. Now the original Charisma, a big part of its success was the styling and the design. And a big part of that design was the big headlight. Something that really stood out from the sea of motorcycles that were there in the market at that time. And that's exactly what Hero has tried to do with this motorcycle as well. It has a really distinctive headlight, one that A immediately identifies it as a Hero Motocop motorcycle. And secondly, as time passes, I'm pretty certain this is going to become the face of the Charisma. So to that end, they've done a really good job with giving it that little uniqueness to make it sit a little outside the segment. But the overall design, in my opinion, it really looks like a certain Japanese bike that's also available in our market. Which one? You let me know in the comment section down below. Now, like I said, the overall styling of this design is really handsome, sharp, boxy, cuts and creases everywhere. And like again, the overall design is to take that sharp attitude that the Charisma had and make it even sharper. One that matches the time it has been launched in, that is 2023. 
a uh, lot of the motorcycles look edgy sharp and really futuristic and this charisma slots in perfectly to that end you have a split seat setup no longer do you have a single seat setup you have an aggressive albeit slightly smaller looking fuel tank clip on handlebars an aggressive rear end with a very interesting tail light fatter tires this nice looking exhaust and an overall design that is rather cohesive what do you think about the design do let me know in the comment section down below and do you think this looks like the next gen charisma or rather do you think this looks like what the charisma should be looking like now let me know in the comment section down below now the charisma it deserves all the credit for popularizing the 200 plus cc motorcycle it really paved way for other manufacturers to come up with bigger bikes because it allowed the consumer to break away from the traditional 100 150 180cc bike and upgrade to a bigger 200 plus cc motorcycle and as a result of that we had many bikes that offered good performance all thanks to this now this charisma back when it launched with its 223 cc engine it made roughly 17 bhp and 18 newton meters of torque and with the xmr that figure went up to 19 and eventually 20 bhp plus but this original charisma even with 17 bhp could sit at 100 km per hour had a top speed of around 130 km per hour and it was fairly relaxed while doing all of that which was a big deal back then now back when i was a child i did want the charisma but i was never really of age to ride one so it was really a post from the wall kind of situation for me but riding one today i can really understand why the charisma had so much hype built around it even today it still feels like a really competent bike it handles well it's got enough performance it can keep pace with a 160 200 or 160 to 200 cc motorcycle of today and that is really saying something considering how much the performance has evolved since then obviously this can't hold a candle to newer performance oriented 200 300 cc bikes today but for what it did back then and for what it spawned i really commend this bike so the original charisma not just for hero but even for the industry was a whole bunch of first coming into the market you had a big 223 cc engine and all those things going on for it just like that in this case not for the market for hero this has a lot of first it is a 210 cc single cylinder liquid cooled engine with dohc so this gets dual overhead cam shafts and liquid cooling a first for any bike from hero and that enables performance figures such as a 25 bhp power output and this makes that 25 bhp at around 9250 rpm so it's pretty high up in the rev range and the torque figure stands at around 20.4 newton meters uh, again these figures make it a little more powerful than the rc200 does it feel that fast well the straight answer is yes but this also does feel as peaky now uh this is tractable don't get me wrong the engine is fairly tractable you can ride it at uh low down speeds but unlike certain other bikes in this class say something like the apache this isn't as tractable where you can stick it in one gear and forget about it and um, the true fun of this motorcycle is had when you get it past 5 and a half 6000 rpm that's when you feel a surge of power and all of those 25 horses start propelling you forward so to that end uh it feels really fast it feels like a charisma should to that end um and again this isn't really targeting the rc200 buyer now the charisma has always been a sports tourer and on that front this pretty much does what you would expect a charisma to do although compared to the previous generation the ergonomics have become slightly sportier so the foot pegs though not very high are still slightly rear set as you can see the fold in my knee but not so much that it would be uncomfortable for longer rides and you even now have clip on handlebars which are fairly wide so you're not reaching for a really crouched position but it is sporty when you need it to be now in terms of handling this is pretty stable that's about as much as i can tell you right now because i've not really had a chance to thrust this in twisties a uh, few corners that i got this did feel fairly stable and we took them at slightly higher speeds uh, so there is that but one thing i want to remark on is just how nice the ride quality is it's really plush it goes over everything with a breeze uh, only the real sharp bumps and uh, stumble strips really slightly upset the bike but again not a deal breaker by any margin the overall ride quality is something that has really left me impressed on this motorcycle 
Braking power comes via uh, disc at the front and a disc at the rear. The front disc is 300 mm in diameter and this bike, it gets dual channel ABS. Although this is something I've complained about on most Hero motorcycles, the initial bite is just not as sharp as I would like it to be. There is the braking power, but you really need to step on both brakes to shed speed real quickly. Apart from that, you have an 810 mm seat height, uh, fairly comfortable for most riders. It's pretty narrow, it's easy to grip and the overall ergonomics are pretty comfortable. And this with a full tank of gas, which is 11 liter fuel tank, weighs in at around 163 kilos. So that is pretty manageable as well. Now another first for Hero on the handling front is a split trellis frame. So this bike features a split trellis frame and that does really translate in the way this bike handles. So. Now on the features front, the Charisma, the old Charisma, it didn't really have many features to talk about. But this one, it does have a fair few. Starting with this, which is a really interesting thing, it's the first in segment, you have an adjustable visor. So this windscreen, it is adjustable, you have a button here and you can pull it up or push it down. Again, not something you can do while riding, not sure why you'd need this, but nice to see that it is something like this exists. Uh, the second thing is the instrument cluster, it's all digital now, uh, there's no analog meters. Um, you have all the information you need, your trip meters, distance to empty, fuel consumption, all of that. Apart from that, you can also pair your smartphone and get turn-by-turn -turn navigation. You also have a USB charger, so you pretty much have everything you need to enjoy this bike. I'm really finding it hard to close this video. The initial question I posed was, does this live up to the Charisma name tag? Now you have to bear in mind that back when the Charisma launched, it was great in terms of everything it did. There's no taking away from that. But you also have to take into consideration that there really wasn't anything to compare it with. So by all means, it was a default winner. Again, I'm not taking away from any of its capabilities. It was a great bike even then. Even now, it still stands true. But in today's day and age, when you have this bike, it has a lot of competition. There's the R15, there's the KTM RZ200, there's the Apache 200 and a bunch of bikes like that. Is this bike perfect? Well, this bike isn't really perfect. It has a fair bit of build quality issues that really need to get rectified before customers start getting deliveries. And speaking of deliveries, you're going to be paying rupees 1.73 lakh ex showroom as an introductory price after which the price will be 1.83 lakhs. And this price undercuts most of the assumptions that have come out online for what this bike would have been priced at. So this had us fairly surprised. It has a lot of performance, it's a good handler and it's comfortable and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do long distances on this as well. So essentially that is everything a Charisma does. But whether or not this will be the king of the segment is something that we will find out only after a comparison test. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section down below and thanks for watching.